Disturbing True Sleepover Horror Stories, Volume 5, by Mr. Nightmare. Hey, what's good? How your day going? How your morning, your evening, your night, whenever you're watching this video? I ain't about to talk your ears off, doggy bomb. We about to jump right to this mug and see what's going on at the sleepovers, dog. Hey, you want to check out the original video? The link will be in the description below. But let's go. AJ. When I was a kid, before we lived in Texas... We lived in a home that had this huge backyard in Georgia that made me feel like the most popular kid in class. Anytime playing outdoor games or sports was ever an idea, my backyard would be the spot to go since we had a two acre backyard. The backyard was surrounded by woods on three sides. It also had many trees throughout the yard, a trampoline in one corner, a hot tub, a big detached three car garage, and an above ground pool. For a middle class area, we really had everything you could want in a backyard. Middle class. There was enough open grass to play any sports, soccer, baseball, football, anything. We even played hide and seek tag, or manhunt as we would call it. One Friday when we were in like 6th grade, my friends and I wanted to have a camp out sleepover in my backyard. It was Mike, other Mike, who I'll call Michael, and Jason. We all had to get our parents permissions of course, but we were like 11 or 12 and it was a Friday. None of our parents had any reason to say no. Plus, my family has lots of camping equipment, including two tents that could easily fit two of us in each one. After all of us got permission from our parents, we made arrangements for them to get to my house around 5 so we could play sports in the backyard. We had too many soccer nets in the yard that we used to play soccer two on two. We did that for like half an hour. Then we played baseball for another maybe half hour. And after just sitting around for a few minutes regaining our energy, my parents ordered pizza for us, so we ate around 6.30 or 7 if I had to guess. The sun was starting to go down a little bit now, so now came the time to set up the tents before it was too dark. I was pretty good with setting up tents because I was a boy scout and we just recently learned how to set up tents. My friends kind of helped, but I did most of the work. By the time they were done, it was decently dark out. The backyard lights were on, giving a nice glow. It was now dark enough for us to play our favorite game, Manhunt. There were a million spots to hide in the backyard. We played in pairs. It was Mike and I hiding first, and Michael and Jason would be hunting. Mike and I split up. Our goal was to get back to the home base point, which was the back door to the house. No camping by the door was allowed. The trampoline was in a far corner of- Boy, am I tripping or is somebody looking at me like Beetlejuice? A little, <laughs> a little bit though, like right here. I, I, I could be hide and seek in the dark, that sound fun AF, dog. House. No camping by the door was allowed. The trampoline was in a far corner of the yard before the woods. I crawled under that to hide. When the hunters would start looking, they had to blow a whistle to let the hiders know they were starting. Once I heard the whistle, I stayed under the trampoline waiting it out, watching the two of them in the distance looking around. I was waiting for a good moment to creep closer to the back door. I had my sights on the hot tub, which was right next to the house. If I could make it over to hide behind the hot tub, I could straight line beeline it to the back door. So when both Michael and Jason had their backs to me looking in different areas of the back door. So when both Michael and Jason had their backs to me looking in different areas of the backyard, I sprinted towards the hot tub, and just as I got right behind it and ducked down, I heard one of the trash bins on the side of the house almost topple over, and then I noticed the motion detecting light on the side turn on. The hot tub was by that corner of the house, but it wouldn't have triggered that light. I went to peer around the corner to the side yard, and I saw a tall person dressed in dark clothes speed walking away in the direction of the woods, before <laughs> entering the woods. It wasn't my dad. I ran to my friends and called the game off, then went to tell my dad about it. We came out and looked around the woods for a few minutes, and then checked the street for any unusual cars. Nothing and nothing. He said we should sleep inside tonight, which obviously bummed yeah. us out. We went inside and just played a game on my PlayStation. I again described to my friends what I saw, just some tall guy walking into the woods on the side of the house after apparently almost knocking over one of our trash bins. We talked about just going back outside and sleeping in the tents since they were already set up anyway. And plus, what were the odds whoever that was was still out there hours later? After we finished playing our game, we went back outside quietly to not wake my dad up. It's not like we were hiding the fact that we were going back out there, but we didn't want to advertise it either. No, you we were each hiding. had a sleeping bag. <laughs> Mike and I shared a tent, while Michael and Jason shared the other. After a while of joking around and yelling things between tents, we started to quiet down and try to go to sleep. I wasn't asleep yet, but it seems like Mike was. 
I started hearing walking sounds in the grass nearby, approaching the tent, and then the zipper to the tent was unzipped, and I looked up and saw my dad looking inside the tent. He said, what are you guys doing out here? I replied to him something like, they wanted to sleep out here, so we came back out. Then I took a closer look at the face peering into the tent. I realized it wasn't my dad, but some complete stranger who looked to be my dad's age. It looked like he was about to come in when I screamed bloody murder like a little girl. Everyone woke <laughs> up, and Mike started to scream as well. The man grabbed our ankles and said to be quiet, nah, but he gave quiet. up when he realized he was about to be exposed. He left the tent and disappeared. I told my friends to run inside the house, and as we were running to the house, my dad was already coming out the back door in response to our screams. I told him I don't know which way he went, but that the man from before was back. My dad ran around the yard, screaming and taunting the creep to come back if he has any balls. We heard it from inside the living room. My mom called the police, of course, and all that really happened when the police officer showed up was he took my recount of what happened, and I'm sure he made a police report, then left. It was good to have a police report at least, so that the cops would be aware of a creep going around. I'm not sure if that man ever came back to our property or not, or if he ever got in trouble for something similar. Either way, it was pretty traumatizing, and it could have gone much worse. Oh, it could have uh, been hard-headed. Caitlin Heck, Hetch. Because I ain't gonna lie, at first, it sounded like it was someone who was trying to break in. Because I was like, the house sound nice as hell, maybe someone was trying to break in, but clumsy ass clipped over the damn trash can. But nah, I'm just some weirdo effing up the night. Damn, that was a dope night, too. I ain't gonna count. I was like, this night sounds so effing dope. This was back a few years, sometime in 2019. I was at a friend's house. I'll call her M for the sake of the story. I was pretty excited for the sleepover. I couldn't wait to talk about all the middle school drama. Now, something you might want to know is M's house was deep in the woods. I mean deep. Anywhere you looked, there was woods, and their nearest neighbor was about a half mile away, but on the back side of her house was a cliff that led down to the ocean. The night at M's house started off pretty good. Our friend Sam was there too. We played truth or dare, hide and seek, and other teenage games. It was getting pretty late, but we decided to go on a walk down the gravel road that led to the other houses along the way. We asked her mom, and she said yes, so we started walking. After another 10 to 15 minutes, we saw a man who was walking on the other side of the street towards us. At first, we weren't thinking much. Maybe this dude was just taking an evening walk as well. But something that didn't seem right was that this man was wearing pretty thick clothing. I'm talking it almost looked like snow gear, and not to mention it was pretty warm out. At that moment, it was like 60 degrees outside. We all looked at each other as we passed the guy, and that's when it hit us. The stench. The disgusting smell coming off that guy. It was absolutely horrible. Words could not describe how disgusting that smell was. It was so bad that after we finally got a few feet away, my friend took a deep breath, almost like she had been holding it. One of my friends ran into the woods and almost threw up. At this point, we felt it was <laughs> best to head back. dog was really stank. <laughs> a few feet away, my friend took a deep breath, almost like she had been holding it. One of my friends ran into the woods and almost threw up. At this point, we felt it was best to head back. Our friend who almost threw up was begging to go back anyway. We all agreed that it would be the best idea to head back. On our way back, we passed him again. This time we held our breath before we passed him. <laughs> but when we looked back, we realized he was no longer walking in the opposite direction, but instead he was following us. This was really annoying. That disgusting smelling man was now bringing his stench even closer. We had no choice but to speed up our pace. We started speed walking. We still had about a mile to make it back to M's house. As we began to speed up, so did the random disgusting smelling dude. We all looked at each other, scared and annoyed. We picked up our pace even more, almost to the point where we were jogging. But of course, the man sped up even more. Now at this point, we were running, and my friend Sam looked back, and then we heard it. Sam let out a blood-curdling scream as she looked back, which caused M and I to look back as well. And what we saw, still to this day, absolutely horrifies me. This man was full-on sprinting at us. He had what looked like a knife or something sharp in his grasp. M, Sam, and I started screaming as we were sprinting down the road. Our screams caused him to stop chasing us, and he eventually just stopped. But he didn't move. He just stood still, 
watching <laughs> us. <laughs> My man, dog. It's just, I was waiting on Mr. Nightmare to finish the sentence. Like, he just sat still with his stinking ass. <laughs> but he didn't move. He just stood still. Hey, doggy ball, you left. stink. <laughs> he didn't stay around to see what his... We didn't stay around to see what his intentions were. We just ran straight back to M's house. Once we got <laughs> back, we slammed the door and decided on not telling her parents, as they were already asleep. We all went to the living room to finish setting up our sleeping areas. A few hours passed. It was about 2 a.m. at this point. We were watching something. I can't remember what, but I know it was some horror movie. Now, I mentioned her house was on a cliff for a reason. Because of this, her house has a lot of windows on the backside overlooking the view. I was sitting on one of the couches that was set up right at the window. It was pitch black outside. All you could hear was the waves and occasional wind. But it starts stinking. All of a stinking. sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, your house stink. <laughs> That's doggy bone. <laughs> it's me in the backyard. Hey. <laughs> But no, for real though, I always tell your parents, don't let don't let these weirdos get away with this ish because it'll keep going over and over. Believe me, I know it sounds dumb as ish right now. Being that young, I know I think the same way. Like, I'd rather not get in trouble. That trumps everything. But yeah, believe me, your parents would definitely be way more happy you told them on something like this versus you hiding it. You getting in trouble, yeah, it's probably still going to happen, but it ain't going to be high up on the list. I might still get a whooping, but... <laughs> I was sitting on one of the couches that was set up right at the window. It was pitch black outside. All you could hear was the waves and occasional wind. All of a sudden, I heard footsteps outside. They sounded like they were right by the window. I told my friends, and M said it was probably the deer that always comes by. For two years now, M had been feeding this deer, who always came up to this very window. I got pretty excited, as this meant this deer would come right who always came up to this very window. I got pretty excited, as this meant this deer would come right up to my hand. I decided to look out the window, and I didn't see anything. It was too dark. I said that we should go outside to pet the deer, but M and Sam said no. Thank you. They reminded me about what happened earlier, and I agreed. So we went back to watching the movie. Another hour passed, and we were all feeling tired. We turned off the TV and headed under our blankets. It was about 45 minutes later. M and Sam were fast asleep, but I felt like I couldn't rest. Something was up. I had this gut feeling that told me not to go to sleep, so I decided to look outside. The moon was just bright enough that you could see the ocean, so I spent a few minutes just staring outside. As I was staring outside, my eye caught something moving in the woods over to the left. I turned my head that way, but I saw nothing. I knew I saw something moving, so I grabbed a flashlight that was on the bookshelf and I pointed it in the direction of where I saw the movement. Now this was probably the worst idea I could have ever had, because when I did so, I saw that man again, but this time he didn't have any snow gear on. Instead, he was completely shirtless, and I wasn't about to find out what else he didn't have on, so I tried to wake up M and Sam and tell them what I saw. Sam woke up, but M was a deep sleeper. I told Sam to look outside, but when we looked, he was gone. Sam looked at me with a pretty angry expression like I was just messing with her. I told her I wasn't, but she didn't believe me. She went back to bed, and I was left laying there. It was now about 4.30 in the morning. It was still dark outside. I didn't sleep at all. I felt myself drifting off to sleep when I heard a knock on the door. I almost jumped off the couch when I heard it. I knew I shouldn't open it, but my curiosity got the best of me. I walked over to the door and looked out of the peephole. Oh. Again, I saw nothing. My head had to be playing with me. I again went back to the couch and threw my blanket over my head. I eventually fell asleep, but woke up at around 5 a.m. in a cold sweat. Something wasn't right again. My body wouldn't stop shaking. And then it hit me. Window. That familiar stench. That disgusting smell. I almost threw up right there. But as fast as I sat up, I heard footsteps coming towards me and I screamed. I flicked on the flashlight and as I did, I saw him, the man from earlier, standing in the corner of the room. My scream woke up Em and Sam, and they screamed too. And as we did this, the man bolted out of the house. Em's mom and dad came running down the stairs, and after a few minutes, we told them everything that happened. 
M's mom called the cops while M's dad walked down the road with a shotgun, seeing if he could find the man. Told. After that, once the police arrived and got all of our stories, I went home. My parents didn't tell me much when I got home. They hugged me for what felt like hours. And from that moment, I wasn't allowed at sleepovers anymore. Only now, years later, did I finally realize just how bad everything was. Yeah, that... The police eventually found the guy. And inside that old shed we were daring each other to go into were five dead bodies. And that stench that was on that man's body was the smell of decaying flesh. Of course. And if things didn't go the way they went, in the end, my friends and I would have ended up in that shed. Joey Smith. I work in risk management for a big bank in Manhattan. I've met a lot of cool people through this job. I go out to happy hour all the time with my coworkers. In 2019, a new guy named Sebastian was transferred to our office. I met oh, him on a, a new guy named Sebastian for all the time with my coworkers. In 2019, a new guy named Sebastian was transferred to our office. I met him on his first day in the office. He seemed very sociable and talkative, and he'd always be laughing and smiling. He went out to happy hour with us that Friday, and he truly was the life of the party, always talking about all of his experiences, all the places he's been and things he's done. There was not a dull moment with him. Eventually, Sebastian and I became friendly, and we went out together once in a while on weekends. I came to realize the more I got to know him that a lot of what he said may have been fabrications. His stories about all these beautiful women he allegedly got with, all these stories of hanging with celebrities, I started to just take everything that he said with a grain of salt, but I kept hanging with him because he was just easy to hang out with and kind of funny. Mm -mm. Sebastian one day invited me to go with him and his sister. I have a love hate when it comes to liars. I, I enjoy sitting there listening to a good lie, but I don't purposely want to hang around you. Just easy to hang out with and kind of funny. Sebastian one day invited me to go with him and his sister to their condo in St. Pete Beach, Florida. I wouldn't believe it. His mom. It ain't no, ain't no condo there. I wouldn't believe it him because he was Everything just easy to hang out with and kind of funny. Sebastian one day invited me to go with him and his sister to their condo in St. Pete Beach, Florida. His mom is very wealthy, owning a place in Beverly Hills, Colorado, and St. Pete. She wouldn't be at the condo this particular weekend, so Sebastian said it would be fun. I invited my little brother to come along too. We all took the same flight. I met Sebastian's sister at the airport. She seemed pretty interesting. Hard to explain, but she was a bit quirky. The condo was actually decently nice. It had three bedrooms. I'd never been in a condo with three bedrooms before. Sebastian and his sister took a room each, so my brother Tyler and I shared a room. I told him if we meet any girls, he's sleeping on the couch though. Since we landed late, it was past beach hour. We went out to some beach bars which were pretty cool. It was a bit of an older crowd. Sebastian was getting really drunk really fast though for some reason. It was a chill vibe, I wasn't sure why he was downing shots. I had to tell him to slow down when he started getting aggressive with people. This was the first time I'd seen him like this. He was also going up to every last girl he saw and drunkenly hitting on them. And 9 times out of 10, the girls seemed uncomfortable. Tyler and I laughed until it wasn't funny anymore and it was more so embarrassing being seen with him. At one point, a bigger guy got in his face for talking to his girl, and I had to pull Sebastian away and apologize to the guy to de-escalate things. As we walked away, Sebastian pushed me and called me a piece of shit for not having his back. Tyler and I told him to just calm down. Even his sister was telling him to relax. Sebastian stormed off, I'm assuming back to the condo. His sister didn't say anything and just followed. This was an extremely bizarre start to the weekend. Tyler and I stayed and finished our drinks. These girls even came up to us and asked how we knew him, making a joke of it. We actually got their numbers, they were visiting too. They said they're going downtown later if we wanted to meet up, and we said we were down. So after that, I texted- Just hang out with every fucking body. <laughs> Just the whole town out. later if we wanted to meet up, and we said we were down. So after that, I texted Sebastian asking where they went, and he texted back immediately that they went back to the condo. Tyler and I walked back to the condo and let ourselves in. We expected Sebastian to be angry, but instead, the second we walked in, he jumped off the couch all excited like, with a big smile on his face, saying, are we going out tonight or what? He was still definitely really drunk. I told him, yeah, we should chill out here for a bit first, though. Then I told him about the girl's numbers we got. 
Sebastian asked how many girls, and I said two. His smile disappeared. Then Tyler, for some reason, told him that the girls came up to us after he left, asking how we knew you. I think he was saying it as a joke, kind of trying to playfully rip on him a bit, which was a mistake. Sebastian stormed away into his room and literally slammed the door shut. I was realizing he must be extremely bipolar or something. I was getting off vibes now, from both of them. I whispered to his sister, is he always like this? And she replied, like what? In a very standoffish way. Never mind, I said. This was extreme. They do the incredible. Help Mr. Nightmare looking for that check. <laughs> you motherfucker got 30 ass. Can help <laughs> I can't skip this one. Standoffish way. Never mind, I said. This was extremely uncomfortable. I was hoping maybe Sebastian would sober up and tomorrow would be better. Tyler and I chilled in our room for a little while. Sebastian never came out. I went over and knocked on the door and asked if he wanted to come out with us. He didn't answer. So we eventually Ubered without them to meet those two girls at some big clubby bar. As I was getting drunker, Sebastian started blowing up my phone with things like, where are you? How could you just leave me here? Your stuff is going in the street. Don't come back. I don't know why I invited you here. I showed Tyler and the girls and everyone was concerned. Something was wrong with Sebastian and he was showing it now. As much fun as we were having with the girls, we had to Uber back to the condo before Sebastian really did something stupid. When we got back, Sebastian was just sitting on the couch alone, looking at the wall. I asked if he was okay. He looked at me, then looked away and said, yeah, hope you had fun. Man, this nigga and he crazy. got up and went to his room and shut the door. Whatever. We went to bed. Tyler and I just stayed up talking to each other for like half an hour, about Sebastian and about life in general. And suddenly, we heard footsteps on the wood floor outside. We stopped talking. The footsteps came over to the door, then stopped. We both heard it. I spoke up to Tyler on the top bunk, whispering that Sebastian is right outside the door. He whispered back, I know. He must have had his ear up to the door or something, listening to us. We didn't say a word. A literal five minutes go by before we heard his footsteps walk away from the door. Then we heard him talking outside. He was laughing and saying stuff, but we didn't hear his sister saying anything. I wanted to see who he was talking to, so I crept <clears> over <throat> to the door and opened it. I looked into the living room, which was dark, but I saw Sebastian in the corner leaning on the wall with one hand and his head down. He was laughing and talking to himself. I heard him say, Joe is always such a stupid bitch, and then he laughed again. My name is Joe. I closed the door quietly and went back to the bottom bunk. I whispered to Tyler what I just saw, and his response was simply, what the fuck? I told him we should leave tomorrow morning and get a hotel, and he agreed. We tried to go to sleep, but the talking and laughing outside went on for another 10 to 15 minutes. When it finally stopped, we heard the footsteps come outside the door again, stop for a minute, then go to his room, and then we heard his door shut. Finally, we felt comfortable going to sleep. Pure, By different. now, I was shot, and I fell asleep pretty quickly. But I woke up probably only 20 minutes later. I sat up, knowing something woke me up. I looked at the door, and in front of it was Sebastian standing there. I jumped and said, yo, what are you doing? He then lunged at the bed, screaming, trying to apparently strangle me, yelling, you're a piece of shit. Tyler had to grab him off of me and throw him into the corner of the room. Sebastian yelled, you suck, Joe. I invited you here just for you to shit on my life and talk shit about me to my sister. I of course tried to calm him down and rationalize, but there was no rationalizing with crazy. We packed our shit really and called an Uber to a hotel, where we stayed until Sunday, then flew home. I saw Sebastian in the office the following few weeks, but he always avoided talking to me or looking at me. And he eventually transferred to a different office, probably because of me. Sebastian seemed cool and normal at first, but he was an example of a very sick, damaged person deep down. That night we spent in his condo absolutely terrified me. Thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this that video. Was, wow. Check the now, now, was Joey a boy or a girl? Because I ain't gonna lie, I was taking Joey the whole time as a female because, I mean, he invited, I figured her out. Like, yeah, let's go out. I'm trying to impress you in the bar and everything, making you laugh. But I couldn't really tell, though. But either way it go, though, yo. Definitely glad everyone was all right in these stories. No one got hurt. Hey, go ahead and enjoy your day. I'm about to get up out of here. You go ahead and enjoy your day, your morning, your evening, your night, whenever you're watching this video. But I'm out.